Innovation isn't just the right thing to do. It's the innovative thing to do. Because every invention, every improvement, every achievement, every small step and giant leap inside our company and in the history of the world started when a different perspective was invited. A different voice was elevated. A different opinion was accepted. To us, inclusion is progress. And it's why we're reimagining how people come together. Changing the system. Tearing down barriers. Respecting and honoring each other's identities. Promoting equality and fairness. Using technology to create more opportunities. And powering a more inclusive future for each other. For good. For all. Cyber attack can grind everything to a halt. Cisco security keeps your network and your company moving forward. Because if it's connected, it's protected. Cisco. If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Medibus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges. Taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing, and security into account. And together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote. No diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25? In 50? Let's be here and here with her and him and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house. Zero carbon, zero waste. Because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. 
humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partner's technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely, delivering power over Ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco Wireless and DNA Spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. And collaboration tools enable hybrid work, decreasing environmental impact. Sustainability is essential to powering an inclusive future for all. That's why Cisco is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2040. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hybrid work is here. It's there. It's everywhere. But for someone to be able to work from here or here, there has to be someone here making sure everything is safe, secure, consistent. So go ahead, log in from here, dial in from here, sit in from here, assured that someone is here with a view of everywhere, ready to fix anything, anytime, anywhere even here. That's because nobody, and I mean nobody, makes hybrid work work better. Cisco, the bridge to possible. At Cisco, we believe inclusion isn't just the right thing to do. It's the innovative thing to do. Because every invention, every improvement, every achievement, every small step and giant leap inside our company and in the history of the world started when a different perspective was invited. A different voice was elevated. A different opinion was accepted. To us, inclusion is progress. And it's why we're reimagining how people come together. Changing the system. Tearing down barriers respecting and honoring each other's identities, promoting equality and fairness, using technology to create more opportunities, and powering a more inclusive future for each other, for good, for all. A cyber attack can grind everything to a halt. Cisco Security keeps your network and your company moving forward. Because if it's connected, it's protected. Cisco. If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe, where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. 
The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Metabus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges, taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing, and security into account, and together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote, no diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25? In 50? Let's be here, and here, with her, and him, and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house, zero carbon, zero waste. Because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partner's technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely, delivering power over Ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco wireless and DNA spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. And collaboration tools enable hybrid work, decreasing environmental impact. Sustainability is essential to powering an inclusive future for all. That's why Cisco is committed to achieving net zero emissions by 2040. Between meeting human needs and a sustainable future, there's a bridge. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Hybrid work is here. It's there. It's everywhere. But for someone to be able to work from here, or here, there has to be someone here, making sure everything is safe, secure, consistent. So go ahead, log in from here, dial in from here, sit in from here, assured that someone is here with a view of everywhere, ready to fix anything, anytime, anywhere, even here. That's because nobody, and I mean nobody, makes hybrid work work better. Cisco, the bridge to possible. At Cisco, we believe inclusion isn't just the right thing to do. It's the innovative thing to do. Because every invention, every improvement, every achievement, every small step and giant leap inside our company and in the history of the world, started when a different perspective was invited. A different voice was elevated. A different opinion was accepted. To us, inclusion is progress. And it's why we're reimagining how people come together. Changing the system. Tearing down barriers. Respecting and honoring each other's identities promoting equality 
and fairness. Using technology to create more opportunities and powering a more inclusive future for each other. For good. For all. A cyber attack can grind everything to a halt. Cisco Security keeps your network and your company moving forward. Because if it's connected, it's protected. Cisco. If we're to build a bridge to an inclusive future, then getting healthcare to everyone, everywhere is critical. Take rural Europe, where local doctors leaving for big cities is creating a medical desert. For patients left behind, many lack the mobility or the flexibility to reach critical urban appointments. The remedy, it turns out, is as much a technological marvel as it is a medical one. Meet Medibus, a state-of-the-art clinic on four wheels. But designing such a wonder came with its own set of challenges, taking everything Cisco knows about mobility, connectivity, video conferencing and security into account, and together with partner Deutsche Bahn, dispatching it from the cloud to create a 21st century lifeline. Now, no area is too remote, no diagnosis or specialist unavailable. All because one company dared to wonder if the road to better healthcare could literally be the road that runs through town. That's the inclusive future. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Where will you be in five years? Where will we be in five years? In 25? In 50? Let's be here, and here, with her, and him, and they. Let's connect them. Let's connect everyone. Let's deliver technology that gives them access to power opportunity. Let's set a new standard for data security and personal privacy. Let's change the system. Promote equality and fairness in the workplace. Let's tear down the barriers to social justice for a more inclusive world. Let's clean house, zero carbon, zero waste because the health of our family is tied to the future of our home. Let's gather resources and partners, steer toward our greatest challenges and accelerate. For the benefit, for all. Cisco has made it its purpose to power an inclusive future for all. Where will we be in 50 years? Let's go see. Cisco, the bridge to possible. Humans and nature. We're in this together. Yet nature has given and given. It's our turn to do more. Cisco Smart Building Solutions and our partners' technology benefit both humans and nature. Catalyst switches connect securely delivering power over Ethernet, reducing costs and greenhouse emissions. Cisco Wireless and DNA Spaces use intelligent automation, creating efficiencies that help the workplace and the planet. 
and collaboration tools enable hybrid work All right, good morning from Las Vegas on behalf of our entire Cisco TV broadcast team. We want to welcome all of you back to Cisco Live 2023. It is Wednesday, we are headed toward our day two keynote, which is kicking off at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. That is 30 minutes from right now. I'm Steve Bulter and I have got Nish Parker and Davis Wallman with me here in the studio. Good morning to you, my Good friend. Good morning, how are you doing, Steve? I'm doing great, I just love that we get to do this at the beginning of the day instead of like waiting till later on. Yes. when we're not quite as fresh as we are right now, <laughs> but I'm glad to have the two of you in here with me. Uh, hopefully you've been having a lot of fun. Uh, Nish Davis, you guys have had incredible experiences. I don't get to see them. I just get to watch them over here on the <laughs> monitors while you guys actually go out and do them. But I wanted to ask each of you to share maybe a highlight from yesterday, something that really yeah. stood out to you as maybe thematic for the show or especially impactful here at the show. Nish, let me start with you. I think for me, it was the conversation that I had with Toby Garrett from Give to Get. It was an interview I did here right at the other set. Um, and I love that interview, just hearing what, the, what work Toby's organization does. It was really an actionable moment. He shared you know, things that you could do at home around helping around homelessness, you know, sustainability. Um, so hearing his kind of thoughts and feedback from his organization, how he partners with Cisco around making these events more sustainable and supporting and helping us do that as well is amazing. It was a great partnership and I really love talking to him. Absolutely, when we talk about what really drives Cisco, all of our technology, we come back to this again and again, it's a people story, it's yes. about humanity, right? And yeah, I really heard the passion in Toby and you did a fantastic job in that interview. So I'm glad you enjoyed that so much. Davis, what about you? Uh, I mean, I'm going to stay on the, uh, the purpose front as well. I had a fantastic conversation with uh, Brian Tibbins around the work we're doing and following that up with another I talked that was uh, upstairs with Oliver Tuzik and uh, Deanna Davenport. My gosh, the stuff that we're doing to elevate just people who don't always get those chances yes. and seeing that in action and seeing that from our leadership, my gosh, inspiring stuff. And that's what, that's the let's go moment, you know? Like that's what I'm here to see. That's what I think we've yeah. all been a part of. And, I love it. Absolutely. How cool is Oliver, by the way? Oliver he's is great. He's the coolest guy. He is the coolest guy, <laughs> and he's genuinely kind. I've met up with him in Cologne a couple of times where he's based. He really is a genuinely nice gentleman, and, and he feels it. He really brings the whole Cisco concept. When we talk about building an inclusive future for all, Oliver lives it every day. It's one of the reasons he is so spectacular here for this particular organization. Um, you a moment ago, Davis, I want to touch on what you said. Um, we're a little less than 30 minutes out, like I said right now, from this morning's opening keynote, and the title of the keynote note is the theme of the show, right? Let's go. And I want to talk quickly. What does let's go mean? Let's go is the spirit that inspires every one of us to respond to the challenges that we face in our markets, in our industries every single day. Let's go is a mindset that moves us forward together, that represents the impact of the work that we all do each and every day. Let's go means taking everything that you learn here at the show this week, the keynotes, the iTalks, the interviews, the inside stories, and then bringing all of that back into your organization so you can start to break down those walls, speed up growth, and exceed goals. Drive your business forward and build our global future together. I love all that. So, Nish, have you seen a really great example of a let's go moment in your engagements as you've walked around and talked to people this week? Therapy dogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby, let's that go. Is, that is the highlight of my week so far, seeing the therapy dogs. <laughs> oh, Scout. You stole my answer yes, there, exactly. Nish. Oh, yeah, that's sorry. right, no. Um, also, in, in the wellness lounge, we also have the sustainability zone, so I, I also really love that. I thought it really inspired um, people to think about how they're using electricity, energy, you know, um, B hotels were being built there as well. It's very practical, hands-on, so lots of things that we can take home in terms of top tips. It was like a playbook on how to be more sustainable mm -hmm. that I love that I could take from this show. I'm like, I'm ready to go, let's go. Love that. All right, 10 seconds, Davis, what about yours? AR, VR demos, it's innovative, it's forward-looking, gets me pumped, let's go. Uh, the WebEx hologram, that kind of thing. My gosh, if you can get a chance to check it out, 
do it. All right, that is perfect. All right, so not to put too fine a point on this, both of you are a considerable chunk younger than I am. So <laughs> I want to talk about next gen a little bit. How's yeah. that for a segue, right? Cisco <laughs> next gen initiatives are designed to support career growth of the attendees who are here at the show, who are in the early years of their career in the uh, technology industry. It's something both of you know so well. We're going to come back and talk about this niche, especially for you. You had a chance to walk around the show, speak to some of our Cisco Live guests about yeah. their views on next gen. So let's go ahead and let's watch that together. And then as soon as the video's done, let's come back and talk about it. Here we go. Hey, Nishan Davis here. We are talking next gen at Cisco Live. We are indeed, and this is the first time that we've ever had a next-gen program at Cisco Live, so super exciting. What do you say we go see what they have to say? Let's go meet them. All right, we're talking about Cisco Live. What is the first word that comes to your mind when you say Cisco Live? Um, I think energy. Every time you get here, you're just surprised by the amount of people, just the overall energy. You know, there's like a DJ when you walk in, everything's super crowded, people are like jumping to talk to people about you know, different technology solutions, so yeah, I'd have to say energy. Super organized. <laughs> and I think, and I say that because, how do you move 18,000 people through lunch? I mean, I can't imagine, so I would say it's definitely super organized. Exciting. I'm just excited to be here. I'm excited to meet everybody and finally be in person because I started recently last August, so I'm just excited. Innovation, new technology, connecting with different people. Networking. I have met so many amazing people. Inclusion, uh, that's been a heavy topic. Meeting a lot of people, there's so much uh, technology that's there over here. We're talking next gen. I want to get your thought on what Cisco is doing to get the next generation really excited about IT and the industry itself. I think it is really great for Cisco's brand to really tap into this audience. And just like Carrie said during last session, 30% of the workforce will be us very soon. And so I think it's vital that they're doing this right now. This is the direction we have to move in. And it's super encouraging to see my peers here from all walks of life um, being excited about the field. The youth and um, new early and career people are the future of Cisco, and it's been a really great experience so far. I'm really excited about the next-gen program and what Cisco is trying to do and bringing that next generation of you know, future employees and customers and partners kind of into the fold more to get learn more about Cisco and you know, their innovations. I am next gen, so I'm very happy that it exists because it kind of shows that Cisco really prioritizes the next generation and the new talent that, you know, we can utilize. Davis, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling so energized after talking to the next gen attendees. Oh yeah, I am, as a next gen person myself, feeling very energized. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great rest of Cisco Live. Oh, great, uh, great job there, guys. So much fun, great commentary there, right? You know, what is so exciting about the Next Gen program here at Cisco is that it really targets Gen Z, but it's not just about career growth. It's also about how do we amplify the Cisco Live experience? How do we attract these fantastic minds, these great skills early on in their careers and draw them into Cisco and Nish? You started with Cisco right out of uni, right? I so, did. Uh, how important is this next, next gen initiative for us here at Cisco? I mean, very important. It's the first time we've had a next gen track or a program at the show, so that's pretty exciting. And I was hosting a panel this week, which I had a blast on, um, you know, with some of our Cisco executives. We had Carrie Gilded, Palin, our way. chief, thank you, Davis, the chief marketing <laughs> officer, Brian Tippins, who's our chief social officer. The advice, the feedback that was being shared was just in absolutely incredible. Um, the program as well is for people that are early in career, that are new to the technology industry, but also people that want a second career, they want to change career. So just the ability to network with people who've come from different industries, different backgrounds, different stages of life, different countries, different skills and expertise. Absolutely amazing, loved it. Absolutely. Davis, what do you think? You know, you nailed it for sure. It's also about knowledge transfer too. We have this next gen coming up, but it's also important to connect them with the older generation who's not necessarily on their way out, but has a lot of experience in the industry, yes. right? And Cisco really dives into that between our net vets and programs like that. That exactly couples with, you know, the next gen stuff we're doing. Mm -hmm. Great to see and fantastic. Yeah, frankly. I mean, I think the, the, my favorite thing was about the panel was we were talking about how the next generation really focus on purpose. It's so important yeah. to them. And Cisco's purpose is to power an inclusive future for all. So companies where you feel like the company values are aligned to yours, you feel like you care about sustainability personally, you want to you know, um, be more inclusive around the world. Like having those alignments 
it is something that we've realized is even more important for the next generation that are coming through. Brand storytelling to draw people in. It's not just about the job. It's not just about the paycheck. We want to do something that we deeply care about, that yes. we deeply believe in. Absolutely. I think it's a big part of Gen for Z, sure. right? Yeah. All right, so here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to join Rob Boyd and Par Marat, Vice President of Cisco Learning and Certifications, who are talking about major developments, talking about new cloud certifications, and very exciting, 30th anniversary of CCIE, uh -huh. which is so cool. Wow. So Rob, let's send it over to you. I'm so excited you could join me. We're talking learning and certifications. Par, Vice President of Cisco's Learning and Certifications. Thank you for taking the time. I can't keep up with what you guys are doing, so I'm hoping we can take advantage of this time to do that. What's happened? First of all, welcome. And what's been happening with LNC the last year? If that's LNC, what the kids say. Learning and Certification. Learning so and certification. this Thank is you. Cisco's biggest learning event. And we are super excited to have our community here to overview and release GA, or General Availability of Cisco U. Nice, congratulations. Thank you. We announced it last year. Yep. And we uh, have gone through EA, and now we're at GA. But the doors are open. The doors are open, and the, the feedback we're getting is phenomenal. And what's so great about that is all of the learning and the, and the training that is included in, in Cisco U leads to a certification. And we are, LNC is the organization within Cisco that develops entry level to expert level certifications. So our CCIEs at the pinnacle right. and our CCSTs at the entry point. Well, I feel like things are moving so fast here and you guys are almost victims of your own success in the sense that I've always felt, and of course the program was established early on where Cisco established we are a learning organization and, and we've worked with people even in college and high school and all the things that kind of tie in because that's what it takes to change the world and to keep things moving at the pace we're going. But over the last year, as things have changed, you guys have, you continue to tweak certifications, specifically cloud obviously being very important. I wonder if you could tell me, how does cloud fit into Cisco U and the LNC charter? What's important and why? Sure, so our charter is to create, the, provide the skills that are needed for individuals to get a job, build a career, and change the world. Yeah. The double-sided value in that is these individuals work for our customers, they work for our partners, they work for Cisco, so they are on that front line doing that innovation and making sure that customers are achieving their outcomes. That takes a broad set of skills. Yeah. And that takes looking at, or what used to be, looking at a very fragmented market. Within Cisco U, we have it all in one experience. We've brought cloud training in, we've brought container training in, we've even brought methodologies in, Agile and DevOps, so people can get a personalized experience in terms of what they need to learn, where they need to learn it and, and not repeat things, be able to contextualize it in a way that makes it relevant and, and more uh, efficient in their learning to get to that level of proficiency. Well, and I feel like from a certification perspective, obviously there are other, you know, these are Cisco certifications and other companies offer certifications, competitors, which is fine, but I feel like Cisco remains kind of the, the, the pinnacle, the, the version that everybody strives for because it feels like what you want to do is you want to have something that says, the per anyone ex that has this certification has the set of skills to bring to your business, your organization. How do you guys manage to maintain that over the years? Because it's kind of, you had the mantle and you've kept it. We have kept it. In fact, our certifications are top notch and still recognized as an industry leader in the networking area. Yeah. And we continue to focus on that, we continue to evolve that. In fact, we've just come out with three new certifications mm -hmm. around cloud and okay. cloud security, cloud infrastructure, and cloud connectivity. We're the honest broker in the room. Yeah. So as you are starting to work with cloud architectures, as you're starting to work with multi-vendor, we have a basis, the network is the basis for the foundation of every other technology. So we are just continuing to evolve, we're continuing to listen to our community, we're continuing to evolve the technology learning spectrum in terms of what our individuals need to get to. Let's talk briefly about the, the one certification everybody brings up with Cisco, because it's the one that's, that everybody strives for, I think, to a certain, not everybody I should say, but people that strive for it is the CCIE. It's been around, is it now 30 years? Is it an anniversary? In July, it is the anniversary, the 30th anniversary of a CCIE. Wow. Yeah, and that is the, the top of the top, right? Yeah. And there have been over 60,000 certifications, CCIEs earned, and there are actually 
at this Cisco Live 2000 that are attending. And every year we celebrate them, we recognize them, and we, we're going to have a party for them this yeah. Thursday. Don't tell anyone. No, you, you know, no you're safe with me. Oh, Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> Good fake. Yeah. I love that. Well, when I took my CCNA boot camp, they actually told me it's going to take roughly 30 years if you want to get a CCIE. So I feel like... Because well, that was what it, it took me it, to learn. And, and it is the skills. It. Yeah. It's the skills. So these individuals, all of our certifications demonstrate and validate skills yeah. versus other right. certifications. Right, yeah, what can you actually do? So final question, you guys have a big area here people can take advantage of, as well as anyone watching online. What do you recommend? Uh, yeah, come by, come by Cisco U. We've got some great activations. Come by tomorrow at 2 p.m., Monday 2 p.m., to learn more about the cloud certifications and or go to our Cisco Learning Network website and see what the blueprints are. Perfect. Par, well, thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, please take advantage of these resources. Learning never stops. You don't have to get certified. You still should be learning. This is the place to do it. Thank you. You still should be learning. Rob nailed it right there. Absolutely. Thanks so much to Par and to Rob. Now, speaking of Rob, he is out in the keynote space right now as the energy builds. He's got a Net Academy superstar with him. Cisco Networking Academy is an incredible global IT and cybersecurity education program. It teaches hundreds of thousands of students all over the world the skills that they need to build, design, maintain networks. Net Academy is helping improve career prospects, but it also fills global demand for networking professionals. We really do love Net Academy, partnering with learning institutions everywhere to empower 25 million people with digital skills over the next 10 years. Great program. So Rob, who do you have with you today? Well, Steve, you know I'm a big fan of learning uh, because it seems to be something I never quite master. It seems like there's more <laughs> I learn, the more I need to learn. But Lynn Bloomer is over the program, Net Academy, but I'm going to have you say it correctly, how would you describe what your role is? And then tell us a little bit about the organization because since the day Cisco gave me a baby blanket when my first child was born, there's been a kinship, they didn't go through any of those classes, but I love the focus on education here. I wonder if you could tell us more about the program and what you're responsible for, please. I'm Lynn? happy to. So Networking Academy is a true skills to job program. We have students in 190 countries around the world we're really excited. We're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. It's 25 years of true impact. Um, my role is our business transformation, our services. What do we provide to the whole ecosystem? And along that, I'm here today with 11 students that were selected throughout the US and Canada by their instructors. They came to Cisco Live early to help set up the network and we call them the dream team. So I love that, and I think Annie may be talking to the dream team now or later or something, but I love the whole aspect of getting education lined up early, because obviously there's the altruistic nature, it's a good thing to do, it's the right thing, we could all use a little career help, quite frankly, but you're getting specific, usable, marketable skills, and, but you're doing it at a young age, so I'm curious, is that part of the plan? Is it, is, is there's a negative side of me that goes, oh, well, Cisco's just really smart. Where if you train everybody, that's what they're used to, that's what they're gonna adopt when they become adults, if, if they're not adults, but you know, does that make sense? It, it makes sense, but really <laughs> when we think about Cisco's mission, yeah. power and inclusive future for all, how do you do that without education? And yeah. what I love is we're educating not just the young, but even those that are switching careers, so right. when you meet the dream team, you're going to see people that are changing. One was originally a train conductor. Others have been in the service. And now they're looking to reinvent themselves. They're looking for what that next chapter is. So I love that we cover the spectrum. Well, I love that we can give the hands on here to come out and help build the knock in a real environment because the network here is not for show. It's set up in a very nice manner, but there's real things happening. There's very pragmatic decisions being made but then everybody learns, and then we also learn as a company, our partners and our customers, um, about who's got the skill sets and the right temperament, and you get to know people a lot better. Are we uh, providing this as a resource just for the community at large? It's not just Cisco, right? So it's not just Cisco. It is definitely for the community at large. We partner with over 12,000 organizations around the world that help us in the ecosystem building this, and these students will go out, some will come work for Cisco, but they will work for our partners, our customers. They will go everywhere with the skills that they've learned. Well, I love that, because I've met so many good people, and I, I'm, maybe you can help me with this. I was trying to think of a word. 
I can't tell you, I've met multiple people at Cisco. It may not be necessarily in your group, but that start at Cisco as a first job training, something like that, and they find enough dynamics in their career that they've been with us for 25 years, stuff like this, and I think they have Nepo babies for like children of famous people. It's not the right term for this, but there's something in there. Y'all help us figure out what is the right term for somebody who's dedicated their life to Cisco, because they're usually pretty smart people, and they found they different ways to move into a career, learn different things, be challenged. What's most important for us to remember about the group, and is there anything that we can do as a community to kind of help foster this? So I think to remember there is a lot of talent out there, so let's tap into it, let's help them. They are starting their careers in technology. Let's talk to them about what are the roles that are out there, give them opportunities to, as you said, get their hands dirty, get in there and do it. Practical. And yeah, the practical piece, because they're going to shine, they're going to impress yeah. you, they're going to be amazing. They are our future. That is incredible. Lynn, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Such Absolutely. A pleasure. Steve, thank you. learning, as we said, it goes, it's a nice one-two punch. You caught that, right? 30 years on the CCIE, now 25 years with the learning program, the Net Academy, specifically. A lot of good stuff happening, a lot of good stuff to celebrate because this is how we create that next generation of, of uh, technology and people so we advance forward. So true, we were just talking about that on set here, Rob, as well, that so much of the idea is how do we get the word out to people to let them know what Cisco is all about that therefore makes Cisco such an attractive destination for people who want to not only up-level their skills, but find their home. And for so many people, Cisco has become that technology home. So, Lynn, fantastic job, thank you so much. All right, Rob, we're gonna come back out to you if we get an extra moment or two. You're doing a fantastic job out there, as always. All right, so let's talk about something very cool that's coming up right now. We are going to hear from our CEO and Chair Chuck Robbins on the keynote stage, but first, our own Annie Murphy had an opportunity to sit down with Chuck one-on-one -on -one to talk about sustainability, about his personal excitement around Cisco Live 2023, this incredible event. Let's join that conversation now. Hey everybody, we're here on day two of Cisco Live. We kicked off uh, the Cisco Live yesterday. We're live on the show floor here, right in Studio B. Joining me in studio today, I'm very happy to be joining with me is Chair and CEO Chuck Robbins. Well, it's great to see you. How are you? I'm doing well. Are Good. you excited to be here? I am so excited to be here. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't I be? All the great stuff we talked about yesterday. We've got a great day lined up today. We're just thrilled. We got a lot of customers and partners here, and uh, it's it's just a great week. What can we look forward to hearing more about through the week? Well, I mean, today you're going to hear about hybrid work. You're going to hear more about security today. You're going to hear about sustainability, and uh, there's just there's a lot of great stuff going on. Interesting partnerships. We got the NFL here to talk about what we're doing with them around both their it's networking really strategy exciting. and security, just a lot going on. Yeah, so we also heard a little bit yesterday from Jonathan around the importance of simplifying across our portfolio. Can you tell us what that means for customers? Well, I think all of our customers are certainly interested in all the great features that we deliver, but increasingly they're, they're even more interested in a simplified experience and how easy is it to use the products, how intuitive is it, uh, so they're work we're working really hard on getting a single pane of, of glass for our customers, making it easier for them to get to the value that they want to derive from our technology. And I thought the announcements made yesterday and the, the trajectory and the, the direction that the team's headed in is fantastic. So one of the other major themes when we talk about simplifying hand in hand is security. Let's talk about the importance of security as we simplify across that portfolio. Well, I tell you, the, the teams have done an amazing job going back to RSA and announcing our XDR platform, and then yesterday, all the innovation that we talked about, Secure ser uh, Services Edge, the, the new firewall product, and just they're, they're just driving innovation at a pace that we haven't seen in a very long time. Every customer wants to talk about security. It's so important, and as our customers continue to deal with the new world they live in, with distributed applications and distributed workforce, distributed data, uh, and it, it's just that they're having to rebuild their entire technology infrastructure, which requires them to also rebuild their entire security architecture. So it's a good time and uh, the teams are doing an amazing job. There's a top of mind for you, I know. We already talked about simplification, we talked about security, but we'll talk about the third S, which is sustainability. Can we talk about what Cisco's initiatives are around sustainability? 
Well, certainly we have our own net zero goal that we're working towards, and, and we're also, uh, as part of that, for scope two and three, we're going to help our customers achieve theirs. Uh, the, uh, our engineering teams are super excited about the innovation that they can deliver in our platforms mm -hmm. to actually help our customers. Uh, if you think about customers in Europe, as an example, right now, with a concern over energy cost, yeah. uh, they're actually looking at redeploying brand new infrastructure just to take down the cost of power consumption. Uh, with the Silicon One architecture, we built technology that actually reduces the, the power consumption in data centers, large telcos around the world telling us that we're taking their power usage down by as much as 80 or 90%. That's so incredible. It's, uh, the teams are very excited about it. We're going to continue to work towards our own goals, but also work towards delivering technology that helps our customers hit their goals. And then the IoT portfolio has a big role to play here as well, because all of these industrial systems that we want to make more efficient, the first thing we have to do is connect them, we have to secure them, and then we can subsequently make them more efficient. Awesome, okay, final question. I know that this Cisco Live, we've just the volume of announcements and everything that's going on. What are you most excited about? I'm most excited about the volume of announcements that are going on. <laughs> I, I was talking to the team earlier and I, I really believe that in all the years I've been coming here, maybe for any event, uh, I can't remember when we've had so much to announce. And, Agree. Uh, it's, it's just fantastic. The teams have done a great job. I hope our customers and our partners are as excited about what's being announced this week and the innovation and the progress that the teams are making to try to help our customers achieve what they're trying to achieve. So I'm pretty pumped up about it. Awesome, well thank you so much Chuck for sitting in and telling us about the whole day ahead. And we've got, I think four days and it's still not enough, but yeah. hopefully you'll get, <laughs> you're getting your steps in. Fantastic, <laughs> yeah. we all are. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much to Chuck for taking time to stop by the studio during his ridiculously busy schedule and to share his vision with every one of us. Thank you, thank you Chuck. Um, Yesterday, he gave what I think is the quote of the show so far, at least for me. He said, uh, once you connect everything, you can achieve anything. Boy, if that's not the case. Annie, I hope you can hear me out there in the busy keynote. Tell me about that interview that you had with Chuck, what you took away from your time together. So, uh, Chuck and I started about the same time, about 96, 97. He came from Bay, I came from Nortel, so that's another whole story. But. What I thought was really interesting is both of us can't remember a time where we had the volume of announcements, the number of new things that we're talking about at any event at Cisco that we've ever been to. And so I thought that that was really awesome that we both agreed that this is going to be an awesome show. Uh, so I want all of you guys to meet a friend of mine over here, Andrew Wu, he's here with the Dream Team of Network Academy. Andrew, give us a few words about the Dream Team, what it means for you guys to be here. Yes, thank you. So right with me is the Dream Team. It's 10 students chosen across the Americas. Everybody wave, say hi. Uh, they've been given the opportunity to come help set up the network and attend the conference. Very impactful to their careers. Uh, the, the, definitely the platform to their future. And they're all happy and excited to be here. Awesome. So. Andrew, you said that you've just joined Cisco about six months ago. Can you give me just like, just your kind of initial thoughts so far? We're just at the top of day two, just the energy and everything. You, you joined at a good time. This is like the first time Cisco Live has kind of come back to this level in um, almost five years. So like, give me your initial thoughts of how it's been so far. Definitely, so actually six weeks. Apologies six weeks, for the oh my gosh. Um, but it's been amazing. Last year I attended Cisco Live as one of them, uh, part of the dream team and so many opportunities came after that. I've seen the happiness and the passion from each employee, at Ciscoian, and uh, now that I am a part of the team and joined, had the opportunity, it's been nothing but what I expected, or more than I expected, but um, as far as each and every employee, the culture really relates from the top down, and it's been absolutely amazing. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys have a good show. We're just a few minutes out from the keynote. We're going to go over to our friend Rob Boyd. Rob, can you hear me? I can not only hear you, I can see you. You're just down the aisle a little bit over here. It's a big room, but we happen <laughs> to be close together. Really quick, back two Cisco champions here. Tell us what you do and what you're most excited for this week. Sure. Hi, I'm Kira Warner-Reese, and I'm most excited about networking with other folks at Cisco Live, my colleagues and folks from Cisco. Excellent. I just want to mention you are a 25, 20 year. Well, maybe 25, one year. Just keep working at it. 20 year CCIE. Congratulations. Thank you. Incredible. Sebastian. Hi, my name is Sebastian Leuser. Um, I'm showing here networking with all the product managers of Cisco and dis discussing the new technologies they presented to you. Perfect. Sebastian, I love it. Steve, you know this group, 
We may be heading back to you in a second, so just take it away from me if you need. I love this group. These are the ones that keep me honest about what's really happening in the market because I get a chance to participate with the champions. See you, Steve. You take it away, please. Thank you so much, Rob. I appreciate it. If my uh, show clock here on the set is correct, we are literally about 25 seconds away from getting into the keynote. I'm really excited about this. Nish Davis, uh, again, let's go. The theme of the show here. So we're going to hear once again from Chuck Robbins. We're going to hear from Jeff Sheritz. Uh, joined once again by Jonathan Davidson, G2 Patel, but we go a bit of an interesting route this time. We have Alistair Wildman with us, VP of Global uh, Customer Experience. The CX story becoming incredibly strong with what we do here at Cisco. Again and again, the idea of how do we reach out to our customers, how do we create the connection with them, and really make all of their technology investments shine? How do they get the most out of it? And then we have another special guest, Kathy Lanier, CSO of the NFL. Yes. And we have a lot of NFL activation happening here. We are so excited to have them back. Let's talk customer experience. When we reach out to our customers all around the world and we tell them not only why our technology is leadership, why not only we have an end-to-end -end portfolio that they can rely on, but it's about what it's like to be in partnership with Cisco and us supporting. What do we think is the big story there? Well, I think it's really interesting hearing from customers and actually to have, like you said, you know, the customer stories activated, shown here at the show is is really incredible. Um, I'm excited for the keynote because NFL is a really cool customer story, That's right? I know Davis right. knows it well and he's going to take us through it later and you know, show us around and give us more behind the scenes. But to couple that with a security story, which is such a big priority for so many people here, and see it come to life is going to be really great for everybody that's watching the keynote. Right, and it is a brand story, isn't it, Davis? 100%, and bringing those customers in to tell that brand story, we couldn't do it without them. It's partners, it's customers, it's end to end, really, and especially in the NFL activation, which I'm really excited to take us through a little later. We get to see just how deep Cisco really goes yeah. into this stuff. Uh, exciting stuff, very exciting. Something that's really fun, when you're walking through the showcase and you're here at the event, so much of that story is, you know Cisco, right? You come here, you look for something. You're a security person, I'm a networking person. I am here specifically to look for what's happening in IoT, right? And then you get into the room and you realize, I don't know what I don't know. It's about exposing people to those elements of Cisco that they've never considered before. And because we have such a depth and breadth across that one Cisco portfolio, we can say, good, you're a security person. Have you ever thought about what's going on here in collaboration and where the security story <coughs> ties together with the collab story? And the better we are at letting people know what is available to them within Cisco, their minds just expand and expand and expand. And I think that's a big part of CX as well, right, Nish? Yeah, for sure. And I know what I love is, um, you know, Cisco's got these four key customer priorities, uh, hybrid work, transform infrastructure, securing the enterprise, and reimagined applications. And th a lot of them are so focused, obviously, on our technology and bringing the different areas together, like security and collaboration, but actually, you know, then providing a business outcome. But every one of those customer priorities has a human element to it as well. So yeah. hearing, you know, what are the people's experiences going to be like of applications and then working backwards on where you're trying to get to with the technology, same with hybrid work. What do you want that experience to look like? How can I become the number one place to work in the world, which Cisco is right now, so very exciting. I thought I'd just throw that in there and brag a <laughs> little bit, right, say, David? Well, a little humble brag. Yeah, <laughs> a little humble brag. We love humble brags. Um, but they are all people stories as well as technology stories, as you said, and it's all about experience. We want to up-level people, not just to be the best that they can be, but to become more valuable assets for their organizations as well. So we're going to head into the keynote right now. Enjoy, so glad to have you with us. Away we go. Okay, oh, look, I'm back. That's what happens when I stop paying attention. For those of you joining us on social media, first of all, thank you for being here. We are going to get to the keynote. A little over two minutes or so from now, as soon as that stage goes live, I promise you are not going to miss a moment of Jeff Sheridson, Chuck Robbins, G2 Patel, Jonathan Davidson, Alistair Wildman, and NFL CSO Kathy Lanier. So stay right here on the stream with us, and we are going to get all of that moving your way in just a moment. Now, speaking of the NFL, we are going to bring you a behind the scenes look at the Cisco Stadium, which is up at the front of this year's Cisco Showcase, right back there somewhere. You're going to get the inside story of exactly what it takes to power a seamless NFL fan experience. And that is whether you happen to be watching the game inside the stadium or you are watching from your living room, doesn't matter. It's so cool to see how every single piece of game day technology connects securely on a Cisco network. We're going to bring you that story very shortly. 
Whatever platform you happen to be watching this live stream on right now, great. Keep posting out your comments, your responses, your selfies, all of that great Cisco Live energy using hashtag Cisco Live. If you hear something that really connects with you here in the keynote, something that sparks a thought for you, we would love for you to post that up. Our social media team back in the hub is going to be standing by to talk with you and then copy you and repost you across our Cisco ecosphere. Our broadcast from Cisco Live Amsterdam back in February, it got over 12 and a half million unique impressions. I can only imagine the kind of numbers that all of you are going to put up and drive this year. So thank you for connecting with us all week long. We are coming to you live from Las Vegas, all over the world in 11 languages, bringing you every moment of every keynote, every innovation talk, all the deep dives, the inside tracks, everything that makes Cisco Live the premier global event. Today's opening keynote is the theme of this year's event, Let's Go. We have got CEO and Chair Chuck Robbins on deck, and he is joined, as I said a moment ago, by Jeff Sheritz, Jonathan Davidson, G2 Pichel, plus Alastair Wildman, Senior VP of Global Customer Experience, and we've got a very special guest, CSO of the NFL, Kathy Lanier. Cisco's technology is here for you. We're going to head into the keynote right now. Thanks so much for being with us. Here we go. Partner officer, Jeff Sherrick. Now, here we go back. This is the moment. Tonight is the night. We'll fight till it's over. So we put our hands up. We'd like to see so good morning. Welcome back to Cisco Live. Everybody have a good time last night? Well, great. You know, yesterday was an incredible day. A day of learning, a day of innovation, and a day of celebration. And I think you heard the announcements over the last 24 hours. We've introduced some amazing innovation. But we're not done yet. There's so much more coming today. But before we get there, I just want to take an opportunity to thank you. Thank you for your energy, and thank you for your focus. And I think I have three numbers to put that in perspective. First is 44,000. That's the collective hours of training that this group has logged so far this week. Yeah. And I know we're not done yet. Second number, 2,000. That's the number of people that are taking certification exams this week. And I know some of you aren't done yet, so keep going and good luck. And then finally, and I think this one's probably the most impressive one at all, that's 4%. 4% of you made it back home, got into bed by 10 p.m. last night. So I hope you're feeling rested and ready to go today. Today we're going to focus on how we create simple, secure, and predictable unified experiences for all of you. And you're going to hear from some of your peers about how they're using our innovation to transform their organization. And then we're going to wrap up the day with a little fun. We have uh, Jim Gaffigan joining us. You guys know Jim? Yeah. A brilliant comedian, and we should have a lot of fun as we wrap up the day. So let's get rolling. So will you please join me in welcoming my good friend, G2 Patel, back to the stage. All right, how's everyone doing? Good? Can we do a competition? Who's doing better? Who was out later last night? How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? These guys had more fun. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to talk about hybrid work. Chuck talked about it yesterday that we, we, we are focused on our customers' top priorities. We're going to talk about hybrid work today, and hybrid work's the new normal. But let me, before I start into all the innovation that the team has done, talk to you about why this is important. You know, if you think about opportunity, it's pretty evenly, unevenly distributed throughout the planet, but human potential is not. And hybrid works one of those ways that you can really equalize the playing field. So we're really excited about all the innovation we can do to equalize the playing field. So I'm, I'm thrilled to talk about this. So we're focused in hybrid work in two key areas. One is reimagining workspaces itself. How do you go out and make sure that you fundamentally rethink how you're going to be working from wherever? And the second is reimagining work. 
right? So let's start with reimagining workspaces. Now, people work from everywhere. They work from the office sometimes, they work from home, sometimes they work in their car, sometimes they're working in transit, sometimes in a coffee shop. And what we've tried to do is make sure that we actually have specific kinds of ways that you can go out and configure each one of those spaces so that you have the best experience for the near end and the far end. So, if you think about the different kinds of spaces where people are working, you know, at home, at the office, what we've tried to do is build purpose-built devices for each one of these areas. And what that does is gives you an immersive experience in each one of these areas. We have a full line of collaboration devices, whether you're working from home or you're working in the office. And what we've tried to do is make sure that every one of these devices is enabled with AI. We actually made a decision about eight years ago that we were going to focus on having NVIDIA chips in our video devices. Probably one of the best decisions we made because now there's such a huge amount of AI capability in each one of these devices and it just feels like magic every single time you watch this. You know? And so um, what we've tried to do is make sure that we have purpose-built de devices for each one of these places, but they're loaded up with AI capability. And we've actually talked about, we've built AI capability in four key areas. The first one is audio intelligence. And the reason audio intelligence is important is because without audio, you don't really have a meeting. Right? Everything else is okay if it's not as great, but audio is so important for a meeting. So what we've tried to do with audio intelligence is capabilities like noise removal for background noise, making sure that you can isolate to only the person speaking, equalizing voices. All of those kind of capabilities are actually hard computer science problems to solve that we've actually cracked the code on. The second one, then, is video intelligence. And video intelligence is where you think about things like people focus, so that if you have a long room and you can't really focus on everyone, you actually, uh, you know, focus in on each one of those people and have an individual box for each one of them. Gesture recognition, auto lighting correction. The third area, then, is natural language understanding. And this was, this was a hard area to go focus on, because what we've done magically well is all meetings start with speech. And it's important to make sure that speech gets to text. And text is not just in one language, it can be in multiple languages. And so that whole notion of making sure that you have natural language understanding at the very fabric of what we do is pretty important because it creates a more inclusive environment where anyone can speak and converse in any language. And lastly, it's analytics and insights. Do I have personal insights on how I've been working on? So these are all kind of areas that we've really focused on. And now comes the next era, which is around generative AI, and we'll talk a lot about that as well. Now, in addition to making sure that we have AI, it's really important that this AI capability that we have in our devices, we don't just keep to ourselves and only our software. We want to open it up to the ecosystem, so all the, enti the entire ecosystem can, 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 um, can benefit from it. So we know that you don't just have Cisco hardware and software within your environments. You actually have invested in other players. That's why we've actually completely committed to an open ecosystem where we will work closely with Google and with Zoom and with Microsoft with our devices. And that's really important so that if you've invested in us, we want to make sure that all the other investments you have are also protected. By the way, Chuck, I think uh, this audience is pretty lively as long as you don't talk about golf. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's actually a very awkward moment because I don't play golf and he talks about golf all the time and I just have to keep staring at him pretending I know what he's talking about and I have no idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, so we talk about openness. Now, one of the things we've done with openness is we've made sure that we've gone a step further with Microsoft. Microsoft Teams is completely integrated into our devices where we can actually have it run natively in our platform. And the beauty about that is it also can launch WebEx right from that native environment. Right? And frankly, there's no rational reason at this point in time for anyone to buy any other device from any other manufacturer other than Cisco because it would just defy logic in every single way. So, <laughs> All right, so what I want to do, if you don't believe me on that, I want to show you two capabilities that will blow your mind. The first one is this notion of cinematic meetings. Now, what are cinematic meetings? 
Um, meetings can get fatiguing, especially when they're long. You know, two hour long meetings, they aren't fun to be in. Why is it that meetings get fatiguing, especially when you're actually on video? Because you have the same angle of the video for two hours. Right? You're looking at that, and, you, and, and the brain gets tired. Now, you don't get as tired when you're watching a movie on Netflix. Why is that? Because every three to five to seven seconds, what you see is the camera angle changes. And so what we wanted to do was refresh the brain and the sensors in the brain just the way that a movie does it for you so that you don't get as tired. And so we wanted to bring that cinematic quality to meetings with AI. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Ever feel like you have the worst seat in the meeting? I feel like no one can really hear or see me. Can we fix that? That's better. I would love to have a camera right there. Nope, nope. Let's, uh, let's put it up there. And can we get intelligent audio so that everyone in the room can be heard? What about framing? So these side conversations don't get lost in the noise. Agreed. Amazing. And maybe it could all be directed like a movie in real time so that everyone on the call feels like they're in the room and part of the conversation. It would be amazing if I could stand and move around the room while I talk. I could go through our latest pitch or market forecast and nothing would be missed, not even if I spin dramatically. By the way, this is, yeah, come on. You know, we do these rehearsals and we're supposed to be within a certain time period. There's a clock that's going and we don't account for the applause and then I'm like 14 minutes over. Um, so, <laughs> um, and so that capability is not just a fantasy. We will have it available in December, right? Now, another really, really cool capability is meeting zones. And meeting zones, if you look at this picture over here, is a very normal occurrence where people are dancing around the office while you're trying to be on a conference call. We wanted to bring practical examples to you um, in, in this meeting. So what, we, what you can do over here is you can actually define a perimeter. And when you define a perimeter, what it does is um, it actually takes away everyone else and zooms in only on the people within the perimeter and actually creates individual video streams for those people in the perimeter. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This is coming in September of 2023. But we know that we can do even more to make experiences better than this. And yesterday was a seminal moment in this industry where Apple announced the amazing Vision Pro. And it's at a worldwide developers conference. And we are thrilled to bring WebEx experiences to this exciting new platform. We can't wait, wait for you to experience it as well. Now, it can't just be about you know, uh, immersive experiences. There's much more than that. And what we've tried to do at Cisco is take a very holistic perspective of this thing. So if you think about a um, hybrid workspace, it's not just about collaboration software. It also has to do um, with how you've laid out the furniture and the acoustics in a room and the power and networking and all of those capabilities. And actually, that's a big challenge for people because when they start thinking about there's a collaborative element to IT, HR, and facilities all coming together because there's a cultural aspect, there's a technology aspect, there's a facilities aspect. What we're trying to do is provide you with validated designs and blueprints so that you can actually look at this holistically rather than just a point solution. And there's no one in the market who actually has a broader portfolio of everything from connectivity and networking to visibility and analytics, do a collaboration set of software and then hardware and all of that in an open ecosystem that works with everyone else, but is tightly integrated together. And so we're really excited about making sure that this happens. By the way, if you happen to be in any of our major locations like New York or San Jose or Chicago or Paris or any others, talk to your account team and go take a visit at those locations. It'll blow your mind. Yeah. So, what we've also done in this space is made sure that we take it a step further and we now integrate Cisco Spaces with WebEx. What does that mean? What is Cisco Spaces? Basically, Cisco Spaces aggregates data across your environment. So things like you know, sensors from devices and uh, room navigators and Catalyst and Meraki access points. All, of the, all, of, all the telemetry that you get from there gets aggregated so that for the users, you have data on availability. 
is this room available for me to do a conference call? I can actually go out and look at that for the entire floor. Or are there, um, for IT and facilities, they can get a reasonable view at what is the occupancy? Is, are people using these, these different spaces the way that we want to? Are we getting the right level of utilization per square footage of space? That's all available through Cisco Spaces. And for IT, we're providing even more visibility. Um, and what we've done is we've integrated WebEx deeply with Thousand Eyes. And what, here what you get is end-to-end -end visibility, uh, which is now part of Control Hub. So you can actually see uh, that you have a great experience, but when you don't have a great experience, why do you not have a great experience? What specifically is something that you're pinpointing? It's the Wi-Fi, it's the ISP, it's something, and then you can actually go out and solve those problems in real time. So it's, it's a super cool capability to have, and only Cisco can provide this level of visibility because we've got the breadth of capability that's all tied together. And that's the beauty of working as an integrated platform across all the, we're loosely coupled, but tightly integrated. You, know, you don't have to buy everything from us, but if you actually buy them, they will be tightly integrated, and that's the promise that we want to make to you. Now, let's talk about reimagining work. In reimagining work, our goal is to provide amazing work experiences, and we're going to do this with the WebEx portfolio. So if you think about what we're doing is we have a platform, and on that platform, we built the WebEx suite, and we built the WebEx contact center. The WebEx suite has a massive set of capabilities for calling, messaging, meetings, polling, Q&A, events, whiteboarding, async video. I'm not even looking at a teleprompter. That's pretty amazing, right, that you can say all of that. So, um, so, so that and what we have on the, on the WebEx contact center side is the ability to have end-to-end -end capability for enhancing customer experience, whether it's a digital experience or a human experience, right? And with our portfolio, we're, we're delivering on both of these, these, these core kind of capabilities for delivering immersive hybrid work, but also delivering and having a vision of delivering a self-learning contact center. So. All of this is going to be underlying with a core fabric of AI. And what we want to do over here is really talk about generative AI, because it's fundamentally game-changing in the market. So the user experience is changing, like I mentioned yesterday. We started with command line, we went to GUI, then we went to a touch interface, and now where we are is this fusion of prompt interface with GUIs, right? And so experience is just going to keep getting more and more natural. You're going to be much more... Um, you know, kind of, um, uh, you know, language-based in the way that you go out and talk to a machine. And let me show you an example of how we're putting this together in our products. Okay, let's get caught up. Introducing built-for-purpose AI tools for hybrid work. Get caught up in previous meetings. Oh, looks like I need to check in with Felix. Interact with an assistant in real time to get better context. AI-powered workflows bring unparalleled flexibility, accountability, and balance to our busy lives. Great. The projects are in good hands. And what about voice? Or if I got, I didn't get a confirmation. Okay, give me a few moments to look for your case and I will put you on a brief hold. Hello? We've all had this happen. The call drops and you've got to start all over. The power of the WebEx platform brings generative AI to voice calls. I see we're on a call regarding a booking issue. I believe you're trying to book a flight from LA to Portland. AI summaries arm agents with all the details so customers never have to repeat no, themselves. Through, and you will receive a confirmation shortly. After the call, customers receive a full summary to their preferred channel of communication. Reimagining work with WebEx AI. How cool is that? This notion of missing a meeting and saying, catch me up on what I missed and tell me the action items, that's going to be available by December of this year, yeah. right? And we also have agent answers. Now, what, is it, what are agent answers? Well, wouldn't it be nice, like, every single time you call a call center, there's a very inconsistent experience. Sometimes you get a great experience because the agent's great. Sometimes you get a crappy experience because the agent's not so great. Wouldn't it be nice if every single agent behaved like the top 5% of the agents. How do you make that happen? You give every agent an assistant. You give every agent a coach and feed them the information that makes the top 5% of the agents special. And that allows everyone to actually perform like the top 5% of the agents. It's great for customers. It's great for, um, it's, 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 it's great for the agents. And we'll make sure that every agent is more effective. Uh, and that's going to be available soon as well. Now, 
We're automating journeys with generating code as well with this. So with WebEx Connect, we can already provide low-code tools for personalization. We will now be able to have tools that, get auto uh, tools that automatically generate code. So you'll be able to, say, validate an email address, and it'll actually generate the code for you that you can, you can install in, in, into your environment. So that's also happening with generative AI. Now, there's one question that you might still have, which is, hey, this is all great, but I've made investments in Microsoft. What do I do with the investments I've made in Microsoft? We love that you've made investments in Microsoft. That's great. We want to make sure that we support the investments you've made in Microsoft. But there's research that we've done that shows that when you've made investments in Microsoft, you're still spending a ton of money elsewhere on things that they might not do. So let me give you an example. If you have an E3 license, what we also have seen from customers is they might sometimes need to buy calling in addition to that. They might actually buy async video in addition to that. They might also buy events and webinars in addition to that from some other players. And you might also end up buying uh, things like polling and whiteboarding and all of those capabilities. And on average, what we found, and this will blow your mind, on average, customers spend $39 to, um, um, to $64 per user per, per month on additional capabilities beyond what they spend with Microsoft. Wouldn't it be nice, even if you had Microsoft, if you just bought the entire WebEx suite for $11.95? And you'd actually save money, take out costs from your environment, and have a great experience that works tightly with Microsoft. And so that is the promise that we want to make sure that it's the best user experience, the best hardware, the best software that complements what you can have with the existing investments you might have made, but also save you money while you're doing it. And so, look, hybrid work is one of the most significant kind of shifts that we've seen in the market. Uh, and during COVID, I think it would be really unfortunate if we reverted back to the way that things were pre-COVID. And um, what that would mean is that the, uh, the ability to have equal opportunity to part participate in a global economy would actually go down again. Because someone in a village in Bangladesh right now is able to go out and participate in a global economy just as, uh, just as easily as someone in the heart of Silicon Valley. We want to make sure that that actually persists. And I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for going out and innovating, not just because it's cool technology, but because it changes the world and makes lives better for people all around the world. Thank you again, folks. We're excited to bring all these innovations to you. Next up, Jonathan Davidson. All right. <laughs> it is uh, great to be on stage here with all of you and see you once again. You know, yesterday I talked about how we were moving towards a simple, secure, and predictable experiences. You know, these unified experiences, they build bridges between technologies, locations, organization, people, and things to drive new and better outcomes for you and all of your users. So I like to think of unified experiences as big, cozy blankets. All right, so imagine that your child is cold and asks you for a blanket. For some reason, you have no blanket, so you go to your favorite blanket store, and unfortunately, there are none for sale. And instead of a blanket, the salesperson hands you a thousand different pieces of mismatched fabric and says, you can sew these together. That may be how some of you feel today, but instead of shivering kids, you have annoyed and aggravated users. All right, and instead of these fabric swatches, you have technologies, applications, and networks that still need to be assembled together. And Cisco is simplifying IT so that you can give your users big, cozy blankets of unified experiences. Now, I've asked some of Cisco's networking leaders to share some stories about customers that are using a cloud platform to do exactly just that. So first up, I'd like to invite Lawrence Wong, who runs both Meraki and Cisco Wireless. It's Cisco, to tell you a few, little bit of a story here. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. I'm really excited to tell you a story about Pima Community College. Pima offers hybrid classes for over 30,000 students across 12 locations. They specialize in automotive and aviation centers of excellence, and provide adult workforce training courses. Now, Pima teachers and students, they are hybrid, so they need to have secure, seamless access from anywhere. 
Schema IT needs to provide a reliable, secure, scalable network that they can manage at cloud scale. Now, about two years ago, Pima had four different networking vendors and no coherent security architecture. This meant that much of their infrastructure, including their classrooms, were outside the security surveillance radar. And this made it incredibly hard to protect against cybersecurity threats. Students and faculty also felt the impact of this outdated infrastructure. They couldn't take advantage of the latest technology to advance education. Now, Pima put their trust in Cisco to redesign and secure their network infrastructure. They deployed Meraki for switching, wireless, SD-WAN. They deployed Thousand Eyes. They deployed a suite of our security portfolio from Secure Endpoints, SecureX, Talos, Cisco IS Umbrella, ultimately providing a infrastructure that can secure thousands of endpoints no matter where they are. And with these solutions, students and faculty, they've been connected and protected since 2021. All this with better management, visibility, analytics through a single, simple, secure, unified cloud networking platform. And this has really differentiated them so they can start offering new educational opportunities to their students here. We also know the faculty experience is unified. Faculty can now check on student progress from any device from any location. They can begin to offer cutting edge resources and training. And what this means is they can start using secure IoT devices so that students can start training on the same tools that they're going to use eventually in the workforce. They can do things like maintenance testing, check for fault codes, do robotic programming, and other real life situations that will give them a leg up after graduation. And the proof is that companies like Mitsubishi, like Boeing, they're recruiting Pima graduates. I love this story because it's great to see how a simple, secure, unified platform is really creating meaningful opportunities of the future today for Pima and the community. All right, thank you, Laura. So that was awesome. All right, that's a great example of how simplifying IT can directly change the experience of users, students, and so forth. Thank you, Lawrence, for sharing that. Okay, and now we're going to hear from Vikas Bhutani, who oversees Cisco SD-WAN and our IoT business. Hey, thanks, Jonathan. I'm here to talk to you about Loblaw. Loblaw is Canada's food and pharmacy leader with retail sales of $40 billion. 90% of the Canadians live within 10 kilometers of their 2,400 stores, making Loblaw a mainstay of Canadian life. Loblaw's mission is to help Canadians live life well. In pursuit of this goal, Loblaw invests in technology to create exceptional consumer experiences, like guaranteeing delivery of groceries, ensuring that the customer data is private and secure, and delivering consistent service to shoppers when there is a spike in demand, like a holiday sale. The unification of this technology and the business processes Jonathan, is like the unified experiences you have talked about. With thousands of locations across Canada, from the vastness of the Yukon to the bustle of Toronto, scaling IT was a challenge. With 5,000 routers to configure across 2,400 stores, automation and centralized management are a must-have for the stores to keep functioning. Whether consumers are shopping online or in-store, Priority is maintaining a consistent and secure experience. Loblaw's network and store operations team, which is who's situated right here in front of me, invested in Catalyst SD-WAN. What took IT weeks and months to do, now with mere clicks, they could achieve their, achieve their jobs. Whether it was bringing a new store online or updating a security policy, Loblaw saves time, money, headaches with a simplicity of a cloud-based platform. All of this translates to a better experience for the consumers. Take holiday rush. IT can now allocate bandwidth to expedite credit card approvals with the increased demand on the network. With their Catalyst SD-WAN deployment, Loblaw doesn't need to send a technician to the store anymore. They could do everything 
configuration, ongoing management, monitoring via the simplicity of the cloud. As a tech-first digital company, they are creating cloud-native retail applications to deliver these amazing experiences. Going forward with Catalyst SD-WAN cloud on-ramps will make it easier for them to deploy applications in Azure or GCP, improving the productivity of their stores. So thank you, Lobla team. It's great to have you here. All right. Thank you, Vikas. Love it. It's exciting to see how much transformation is possible with an experience that, honestly, we all take for granted going to the store. In fact, we just announced a managed service partnership this morning with AT&T that actually makes it simple to get started and shortens the time to realize the impactful outcomes, like what you've heard so far around Pima Community College and Loblaws. So thank you, Vikas, for sharing that with us. And thank you to the Loblaws team for being here in person. And finally, please help me welcome Mohit Ladd, Cisco's Network Assurance Leader and co-founder of Thousand Eyes. Thank you, Jonathan. It's just, it's just fascinating listening to all these customer stories. And I have one more to share. I'm excited about this. So hybrid work, as you know, is everywhere. And what this really means is your users, your employees are, ex are expecting the same experience no matter where they are, whether they are at home or at office. And what, this, what makes this even more complex is the fact that the applications they're consuming are now moving to cloud or are SaaS applications. So both endpoints of this experience are moving away. Now let me do a quick audience poll. When users have a bad experience in this environment, which team gets blamed? The network. First, thank you for saying the network. If you had said, some, said something else, I wouldn't know what to follow with. So that's good. <laughs> the network always gets blamed. And I want to share a story of uh, Honeywell. This is a great example. Honeywell is a global tech company with over 114,000 employees operating in 50 countries. And they were moving and transitioning to video conferencing and working from home hybrid. Uh, and it was really important to assure these experiences. So they looked at Cisco Thousand Eyes to achieve this. Uh, and the way they did this, and this is something I really love, is first, zero-touch deployment. Zero-touch deployment of Thousand Eyes on the Catalyst 9000 switches they already had. I love this because this was, the, this was one of the goals of coming inside Cisco, which is to make deployments really easy. With this, they could light up this environment, not just end-to-end -end within Honeywell, but beyond to cloud and SaaS. In addition, with all the insights that Thousand Eyes provided on the internet, they could actually make user experience even better on the endpoints. Now, in addition to this, in addition to reacting fast to the issues, they could use the, the insights from Thousand Eyes to actually make better decisions that impacted their network landscape. So think about that. That's where you're starting to plan better. And, and finally, the, the data from Thousand Eyes was presented in a dashboard that was shared with other parts of the organization. So this created transparency within the organization. So people can't just blame the network. In Honeywell's own words, Thousand Eyes not just impacted IT operations at Honeywell's, but also resulted in happier users and happier customers. And I hope we get a chance at Cisco to work with all of you to help you operate better in this hybrid world. Thank you. All right, thank you, wow. Okay, so hybrid work really is the ultimate unified experience, and I think that is a great place to wrap up these stories. Mohit, Vikas, Lawrence, thank you so much for all that you're doing to bring these unified experiences to the market. Okay, now you've heard about Pima, blah, blah, as well as Honeywell. Imagine what simplification can mean for all of you. Cloud management that is connected, and protected with greater visibility and assurance. Sounds phenomenal. Now, the NFL took that possibility, and wait for it, they ran with it. Uh, all right. Now, today, the network is, wait for it, the network is scoring touchdowns. All right. G2 is going to join me now on stage with a special guest to tell us all about that. So along with G2, please, Join me in welcoming the Chief Security Officer of the NFL, Kathy Lanier. Kathy, please join us up on stage. Um, I lost my mic. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, too. 
All right, Kathy, it is literally a privilege to have you here with us at Cisco Live. I, hey, look at that, a football. We'll play, we'll play that Kathy, a little bit later. Before we get started, can I just say something? Uh, I apologize for Jonathan Davidson. He thinks he's a funny man. Hi. <laughs> he's not really a funny man. I'm pretty tolerant okay. of that stuff. You're okay, anyway. Jonathan. Thank right. you. Thank you, Gigi. <laughs> I love you, too. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm sure... Nice try there, Jonathan. I'm sure there are a lot of football fans here. All right. I was looking for jerseys. Yeah. I was looking for all the jerseys. Yeah, where are all the jerseys? We'll have to look on that. Oh, there we go. Oh, right there. Whoa. Hey. Oh, we got another one. All right. Fantastic. And, and many are really excited to see the Allegiant Stadium up close. It's a beautiful stadium. And before we jump in the NFL, Kathy, I am so very impressed with your personal journey. You left school after ninth grade to raise your son. You went on to earn two master's degrees from John Hopkins and the Naval Postgraduate School, which is no easy feat. We talked about that. You became the first commanding officer of the Homeland Security and Counterterrorism for Washington, D.C.'s police force. Then... Hey, D.C. <laughs> we got some D.C. people in the house. <laughs> yeah, and then you became Washington, D.C.'s first female chief of police and have overseen seven different presidential inaugurations. And you are the chief security officer for the National Football League. You know what, I, I'm delighted, I'm personally inspired, and what strikes me the most is that you have been a first mover all of your life. Tell us about the transformational journeys that you have led at the police department and then at the NFL, please. You know, interestingly, when I took over as the chief of police uh, in Washington, D.C., I was 39 years old, and I was replacing uh, a chief who was one of my mentors who had been on the job 35 years. So it was quite a, a transition. And what I wanted to do at the time, we were all a paper-based agency. So we had really no technology. Literally in 2007, we didn't even carry mobile phones. Uh, and I remember begging for a Palm Pilot. For those of you who remember the trio Palm Pilot, I'm glad to see there's a few people in here at my age. Um, so. Um, over the next 10 years, when I served as the chief of police, I made it my mission in life to bring as much technology as possible to policing so we can make our cities safe. And during that time, we deployed um, records management system, automated all of our police reporting, gunshot detection technology. We integrated with our cameras. We integrated with our license plate readers. For those of you that have been to Washington, D.C., we had automated traffic enforcement, so uh, speed uh, enforcement, red light cameras. This was all early iterations of, of AI that was being used across the city. And in the course of that 10 years, integrating all of these technologies, by 2013, we had dropped crime in Washington, D.C. to the lowest level we'd seen in 60 years. So technology was wonderful, wonderful. And then when I came to the NFL, I wanted to continue that, uh, that journey, to continue to push innovation and bring all the technology I could to make our, make our environment safer. But what you have to remember is the more technology that you bring, the more attack surface you also bring, right? So bringing all of these different uh, technologies gave us more to protect. And Cisco has been a tremendous partner in helping us do that. So Kathy, on, on the attack surface increasing, what are you folks doing from a security standpoint? The thing that's really interesting that I, um, I learned about you folks is you've tied physical security with cybersecurity together as well. So can you talk a little bit more about how you think about the world of security? Sure. I believe it's impossible to not have physical and cyber security together anymore. That convergence is critical. There's still a lot of industries that have not made that switch. Um, but security is security. It's 360 degrees. It's, it's all the time. It's everywhere. And uh, the way I approached it at the NFL is I had to go to my IT colleague and ask my CISO to dance. And so Tomas Maldonado, I know you, Maldonado, you've all heard from, from here. I brought him. Uh, on as a team, we integrated our cyber and physical securities together, and it helps us to really change the way we think about security and just think about the game day environment in a stadium and how we're protecting all of those threat surfaces, those industrial control systems, and all the things that nobody was really thinking about when we're putting up metal detection and physical security barriers. We also need to secure the entire environment at our stadiums, our scoreboards, and all of the other things. So. We've made that integration now. Uh, when you think about you know, 2,500 screens that somebody could hack into during a live broadcast game, that's not a good day for the NFL. <laughs> so, so like, I'm, I'm sure you folks have done like, game theory on when a scoreboard gets hacked, what are the kind of consequences that can happen? Like, do you have any, any uh, 
Any ideas on like what could go wrong? Well, well, first I'd probably be out of a job. Um, but uh, during the Super Bowl, we have more than 70,000 people that are concentrated in one area, and, and you know we've had loss of scoreboards before. We've actually had that happen, uh, and we had malfunction of a video board and scoreboard that went on for two separate games before we were able to determine what the problem was and, and correct it. So it's happened. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, so if you think about the chaos that someone could create, um, hacking into those, think about SoFi Stadium, right? SoFi Stadium, 2,500 plus video boards around, uh, around the stadium. They are doing everything from timekeeping to management of the score to transitioning for broadcast. So it's a, it's a big deal if, if we lose that security. And, and Cisco's been huge in helping us. With SoFi in particular, end-to-end -end, uh, Cisco. Well, during the Super Bowl, if you need some additional hands, for helping you with connectivity <laughs> and security. Jonathan and I are willing to oblige and come <laughs> over and just kind of be there for you. We're, we're very helpful, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, so, you know, look, as you've modified uh, your unified experience, how has it changed the relationship with, with your fans? Well, we now enjoy a relationship with our fans. Uh, technology is making football last all year long. Uh, we used to, people think we have like time off, off season, that's not true. Uh, football used to be a one-way broadcast for our fans. Now it's actually a two-way conversation. It's interactive, where we engage not just on game day, but every day in real life with our fans. Uh, if you just think about it's not just people sitting in front of a, a television or sitting in a, in a seat in a stadium anymore. Uh, people have their mobile devices in their hands. They're engaging with fantasy football. They're mobile betting. Uh, they're engaged with us all year long with our tentpole events, the Super Bowl, Pro Bowl, Combine, Draft. You know, Draft has gotten so big. Uh, I think we had 600,000 people at draft in Nashville. Uh, this is just live attendees. So uh, it is 365 days a year. Well, I can certainly tell you my, uh, my son, 16 years old, is so excited about draft day. And he does fantasy football. He got me to play fantasy football. <clears throat> but I didn't know you were supposed to change the players every week. Um, <laughs> and so I, I, lo I lost miserably. <laughs> um, uh, but I remember being at the Super Bowl just a couple years ago, and, and everybody was streaming Dre and all that good stuff, and it struck me that you have to have an incredible network yes. to make this work. You know, it is, our fans are also, they're not just sitting in the seats anymore, like I said, they are co-creating content. People are live streaming, and there's so much going on in the stadium and game day, and you know, 70,000 fans capable of just live streaming at the same time during the Super Bowl. Think about the halftime show. When you watch that halftime show, all the cell phones lit up, videotaping and live streaming. Uh, it's really critical that we have systems in place that allows us to do that uh, and also do it securely. And in Super Bowl, the Super Bowl you went to, uh, SoFi, end to end Cisco environment, and that is what makes that possible to handle all that traffic. But there's there's more to it than that. I, I, I come from the world of safety and security, and many of you watched uh, the horrifying uh, circumstances around Damar Hamlin uh, this past year. And what you didn't see and what you didn't know was going on at that time is while this critical crisis is going on in the field, um, the surge in uh, that, that time while they were trying to, you know, get first responders in there, have the medical team working on Damar Hamlin, contacting the hospital to get transport, to get his transport organized, and everybody's relying on that network. Everybody is relying on the network. In the meantime, the uh, number of people in the audience that were streaming, the people in the, in the stadium that were streaming, on a normal game, through the course of the game, 6.8 terabytes is what normal environment is in that stadium on a game, but in one hour, just one hour during DeMar Hamlin incident, well, we were up to 11.1 uh, terabytes. So, the ability for that network to handle and handle securely so that those first responders and everybody else could still do what they needed to do and communicate and manage that crisis, this is what it's all about. And that's why the partnership is so critical. That's great. Well, personally, I am absolutely amazed at what you're doing. Thank you. So, Kathy, thank you so much for being here and walking us through how the NFL is transforming an industry. Okay, using can I ask Kathy a personal question? Uh, He's like a little two, kid. Two personal questions. Okay. <laughs> two personal questions. <laughs> All right. I don't think you have to ask me. If okay, you one, ask one Kathy, personal question. You have question. to ask her. Which do you like better, football or golf? <laughs> I like football a little better than golf. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I don't. Okay. Now I'm gonna rat you out. G2, have you ever thrown a football? <laughs> I, I could. I could do it right now. <laughs> All right.
Okay, so with that, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, I, Kathy, so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you, having you, having you too. It's a pleasure. Okay, we are thrilled to be partnering with the NFL and we're excited to work together with them. It's such an honor. And I highly encourage you to go visit the NFL experience in the world of solutions. If you haven't seen what they're doing, it's, it's just truly remarkable. It, it, it seems like it's just a game, but like there's so much that goes behind it. And it's, it's, um, it's amazing. Now, um, the next, um, I, I want to get my, my, my next guest, who is Alster, who actually runs our customer experience, who makes all of this happen. So, Alster, come on stage. Thank you, thank you everybody. Hello, good morning and welcome. My name is Alistair Wildman. I'm the new global leader for the customer experience team. And this is my first time on the stage. So be gentle. Now, Kathy, I didn't play American football, but I did play rugby. And I think there's a lot of similarities there. Two incredibly great sports teams trying to get the ball over the line. And that also reminds me a little bit about my own organization, the CX team. Everybody inside the CX organization is completely obsessed with making you, our customers, successful. Now, I love coming to these events. I love coming to hear about all the great new technology announcements from Jonathan and G2 and Liz. But I bet you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. Number one, is this going to add more complexity? You know, how do I get from where I am today to where I need to go? Number two, will this add more time? You know, how am I going to get time to value? And number three, do I have the right skills? Well, if there's one message that I want you to take away from my segment today, it's that we've got your back. You know, my CX team has got, fact-checked, nearly 100,000 years of Cisco experience. We have 14,000 certifications, and we've been doing this for 35 years. So we have got your back. And it's not just about my CX team, though. It's also about our incredible Cisco partners. Now, if you're a Cisco partner, could you raise your hand, please, so we can see who you are today? Wow, check out all the partners here. Ladies and gentlemen, can you come join with me? A round of applause for our incredible Cisco partners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. I also checked there are over 100,000 certifications within our Cisco partners. That is incredible. Thank you so much. Together, we're going to deliver great experiences. We're going to help you plan, design, and implement this technology. We're going to help you adopt it and optimize it. We'll even manage it for you. And I know there's a huge, huge new topic here, sustainability. Come and look at what we're doing in the world of solutions around sustainability. We are now really active in this. But for you, first move of technology is something different for every one of you. The NFL was a great example. CX gave the NFL very deep insights and analytics and data to push the art of the possible. You know, making sure the headlines were the Super Bowl and that incredible halftime show and not a cyber attack. For every customer, we know that you're unique. We know your story is unique. You're the change makers. You're the innovators. You're the people that are driving your own transformation at your company. Three years ago, we hosted, for the last three years, we've been hosting the CX Hero Awards and our stand in the world of solutions. And today, I'm absolutely delighted to bring those hero stories here to the stage. So let's start. The first time, we're going to start with this solution. It's going to be security. If security is your number one concern, then we've got your back. For Nate, thank you, at Children's Hospital, it's all about the parents' experience. So we work with Nate to make patient records available across 65 remote locations securely and safely. Nate, you sat over there, thank you from all the parents in the audience here today for allowing our children to visit the most uh, convenient location. And from Ben, who's from Baltimore Police, it's all about the citizen experience. Now Ben wants to sleep safely at night, so we re-architected his end-to-end -end security stack to keep the citizens of Baltimore safe. If security is top of mind for you, we've got your back. Yesterday, Jonathan, my good friend here, was talking about massive connectivity equals massive challenges. So let's look at the next three heroes, how they overcame those challenges. For Ali at Honeywell, who's getting their second call out, Ali, well done, mate. 
It was all about the engineer experience. So we were, and I understand this, I've got about 10,000 engineers in my organization. Engineers want to drive innovation, they love it. So we worked with Ali to help him to automate a lot of those manual tasks in the network, which frees up time. So now those engineers at Honeywell can drive that innovation. Well done, Ali. And for Javier, it's about the traveler experience. Now, as a frequent flyer, I can tell you now, any downtime will ruin your day. So using incredible insights and analytics inside the CX cloud, Javier can now focus on the passenger's comfort and safety. Jeff, who's the CTO of New York City Health and Hospitals, he's looking for the ultimate patient experience. New York, this is the largest municipal healthcare system in America. It's every single citizen in New York, no matter who they are. So we work with Jeff to migrate the data centers and move all that patient data and make sure it's all clearly protected. Thank you, Jeff. It was a fantastic project. Three more heroes and three more great examples where we've got your back. Thank you. As Chuck said, to securely connect everything, we can make anything possible. So let's move on to our last three heroes. Now, Mike, at Nationwide, it's all about omni-channel customer experience. Nationwide is on your side. I, I promise I wouldn't sing the jingle, but it's a great jingle. That's customer choice, anytime, anywhere. Now, Ben from Princess Cruise is slightly different. I went on my first cruise this year, and the ship was huge. And when you're on that ship, it's all about the experience of being on that ship. And it's not just the passengers, it's also it's the staff as well. It's the, it's, yes. So we've worked with Ben to build a hyper-fast internet Wi-Fi access points to give him that wireless experience because on the ship, this is the medallion application. With this medallion application here, it's a wearable. You can do a contactless check-in. It opens your doors. It will find your children on the ship, and you can order your food and drink, and they bring it to wherever you are. Fantastic. I cannot wait for my next cruise with you, Ben. Now, for Merley at Workday, it's all about elevating the employee experience through seamless and secure device authentication, whether you're at home or in the office, making every day an amazing workday. Now, it also starts with employer onboarding. Now, imagine coming to work on a Monday morning and realizing that you had to onboard your new CIO. Well, this actually happened, Merley. Now, last week, I was very, very fortunate to actually spend some time with Rani Johnson, who's the new incredible CIO at Workday. Let's hear what she had to say. Please roll the video. Hi, everyone. I'm delighted to be here with Rani Johnson, the new CIO of Workday. Hello, Rani. Hello, Alistair. So you're, you're new to Workday. I am. So what's impressed you most about your early days at Workday? Oh, it's been fantastic. Workday has an incredible culture. Um, our value system is based on employees, customers, integrity, innovation, fun, and profitability. And it's been really, really a, a wonderful experience. So, Rani, many of the audience members that are watching this video today at Cisco Live are from IT, IT practitioners. Everything from CIOs all the way down to IT apprentices. You know, as a CIO, what advice would you give them? First, hone your craft. It's so important to be a good IT professional to really understand the tech and, frankly, how to um, make sure that that technology is delivering on the value that the company made the investment in it for. And as a CIO, what, what keeps you up at night? Now it's, frankly, security. Um, it's just making sure that we all have all of the proper controls in place and all the mechanisms to ensure that we've got a, an environment that has um, been, frankly, unbreached. One of the big challenges now is we've got our uh, employees coming back to work um, and making sure that they are able to be as productive as they were at home um, and making sure that we are providing a secure and reliable environment for them to be as productive as possible. So if you think about the people that are just starting their career in IT, what kind of advice would you give them and, what, and your hopes for future technologies? love to see more um, women, people of color, um, and younger people entering in the field of, of IT. It's a wonderful place. What I hope to see in the next generation of IT professionals and leaders um, is, is folks who, who think about IT differently, bringing a more customer-focused mindset. So, Ronnie, um, we're here today to give you an award. So I'd like to thank you for your partnership. Thank you for the work that we do together. A big shout-out for Morali and the team. Yes, I know. Really. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. And with that... I'm going to hand over the Cisco Employee Experience Award. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank it's you. beautiful. 
Okay, before we let you go, what do you think the most desired technical superpower is? Seeing into the future. Oh, okay. <laughs> Knowing what to expect. There's so, so many uh, challenges in, in being a technology leader. Um, the, the thing that we would love to do is just have something be predictable. And so if I could see into the future, I definitely would. Thank you, Ronnie, our, our, our Hero Award winner today. Thank Yay. you, Alistair. Thank you. <laughs> so, Merle, good news. I think Ronnie's happy. So, to be, to be a great hero here, it's not just about customer experience or employer experience, it's about the CIO experience. And ladies and gentlemen, I have our hero winners here today. Could you please be upstanding? And would you join me in a round of applause, please? Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for everything you do. Morali, Nate, Ben, Ali, Javier, Jeff, Mike and Ben. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. So on behalf of my Cisco CX organization and all our partners who are here today, thank you to all the customers who are here in the room today and also on live. Remember one thing, we've got your back. Thank you. Oh, what a fantastic job, Alistair. <laughs> really brilliant. So great to hear the CX story coming at us. Congratulations to Ronnie and to all of the heroes. Welcome back to the Cisco TV studio. Congratulations to all of our fantastic speakers in this morning's keynote. We are going to get a chance to come back and comment on some of the content that you just heard this morning very shortly. I just want to let you know your stream has not stopped, but our coverage of the session has temporarily stopped. No worries at all. We have got you covered a couple of fantastic stories coming your way. We would love to have you with us in person next year to take part in every bit of content that we have to offer here at Cisco Live. For example, today is hashtag Wear It Wednesday. Here at the show, we have got attendees all over the event who are sporting their NFL pride here at Cisco Live. And if you want to sport your own NFL pride at home or at the office, go ahead, post a selfie wearing your favorite team's attire and then post those up using hashtag Cisco Live and hashtag Wear It Wednesday for a chance to win an official NFL football. That is so cool. As you just saw, our special keynote guest was Kathy Lanier, CSO of the NFL. Well, NFL and Cisco, this is a great connected portfolio story. And our own Davis Woolman is right next door over here in the Cisco Stadium, learning what it takes to power a seamless NFL fan experience all the ways that every piece of game day technology can connect securely across a Cisco network to bring you that brilliant fan experience. So Davis, what are you seeing over there in the showcase? Steve, thank you. I, I got to tell you, I've been looking forward to this one uh, pretty much all week. This is, I think, my favorite activation on the whole show floor. Yeah, we're talking NFL, NFL Stadium, in the world of solutions, right on the show floor. It's kind of the flagship, and I get to talk to my great friend and colleague, Ken Martin. He's our director of our sports media and entertainment industry and our industry solutions group. Ken, thanks so much for being with us. I ah, appreciate it, Davis. You know, our partnership with the NFL goes back well over a decade. Why? Because they're able to use us for the draft, the Pro Bowl, and of course, the granddaddy of them all, the Super Bowl. But I like to really focus in on what we've done in the stadiums. Right. Of course. Our first NFL stadium uh, was way back in 2008 when we started working with the Dallas Cowboys. And the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, would always say, listen, if I'm going to invest in something, there ought to be an ROI. So he challenged us to come in in a way in which we can activate a sta uh, his stadium and sell sponsorships. Right over my shoulder is something that we've uh, been successful in selling in stadiums all over the world, which is our IPTV solution, now known as Vision Edge. Jerry was able to tell people that he's actually making money before he even opened the doors to his new stadium. Does that sound just like Jerry Jones? Of course, the I best marketing it. company in the world. You can't do better than that. What, what else did we do with that? Connectivity has, has come a long way. So what we've seen is uh, the mobile experience be an essential part of how you experience the game, from letting yourself into the venue with a mobile ticket to how you purchase merchandise and food and beverage throughout the, uh, the event. Connectivity has to be First class, right? First class, absolutely. We introduced our uh, Marlin antenna up here, the 9104. It is a, a leader and it's something that separates us from the rest of everybody in the pack simply because it gave us the ability to cover areas in a stadium that we can never cover before. So that is, uh, you know, top of the, the class when it comes to HD Wi Fi. And we're not just talking NFL there, too. That's been uh, activated in a few other stadiums as well. 
Well, yeah, we don't discriminate when it comes to, you know, where we sell HDI uh, Wi-Fi in stadium. It's successful in all stadiums, of course. Absolutely. All around so the world. let's keep talking about how we're powering these stadiums with some of the other tech we've got here, especially in the showcase. Broadcast video uh, has come a long way. It's probably changed more in the last five years than it has in the, in the previous 50. What we've done is we've introduced the ability to not only put IPTV on the network, of course, connectivity through Wi-Fi, Certainly. but now we've introduced Cisco IP Fabric for media. It allows us to, uh, to take a standard SDI connection and put it over IP. I mean, that is really the kind of the brains behind everything, too. If you're talking connectivity, you couldn't do it without this. This is a critical link in the whole structure, right? In a stadium, it has become the, the network has become the fourth utility. Davis, you know, everything gets plugged in the stadium from, uh, from audio to lighting to everything that we have here in the showcase. So come by and see us and, and we'll explain to you more. And of course, it all has to be secure. Absolutely. Security is, as uh, we've just heard in the keynote, that's almost everything we do here. If it's connected, it's protected. Am I right? I love that. <laughs> Get this guy a, a friggin' gig <laughs> tossing some, hawking some great stuff here. And by the way, in case you were wondering where we are, kind of hard to miss. <laughs> Listen, we made it really easy for you, right? If you look for the big Cisco sign, right up ahead, you'll see the Cisco Stadium. Um, but what? before we get there, there's also, this isn't just, you know, we talk IT, we talk all the great secure stuff we offer, connectivity in the stadium, all wonderful stuff, of course, but we also get to have a little bit of fun here, Ken, don't we? Of course. I mean, we can't just talk technology all day. Please. Listen, every <laughs> one of us is sitting at home in our comfort of our own living room and made the call, right? Either that or we've judged and said, yeah, look, that call was wrong by the officials. I've definitely thrown something at my TV while watching an NFL game before. Full disclosure, I'll be honest, Ken. So we've, we've made it simple for somebody to test their own skills. So basically what we've done is come on over and visit us in the and the uh, Cisco Stadium, we're actually allowing you to make the call. So put on the stripes. You're telling me I get to get under the hood here and uh, get, feel all that pressure from those fans at home who could obviously play football and, and officiate a game way better than me as an NFL rep. Get to, get to do their job? Listen, I want you to be able to come in and make the call. So basically what you would do is watch an actual play that happened in the NFL season last year. The, the call is controversial. Got to call timeout. You get to look at the replays and make the call yourself. Once I mean, you submit, you'll be able to determine whether you got the call right or not. Oh my gosh, so uh, what, do you, what do you think on that one, Ken? Well, clearly it's a catch, Davis. I mean, I'm- I'm so sorry, but- Oh. <laughs> There's flags on that play, Ken. I got Ken. it wrong? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not tossing it back to New York just yet, but I'm pretty sure we, we can do better next time. Let's see how you do. Just come back and uh, put on the headphones and test your own knowledge around it's just, making a call. It's just one of the awesome activations we have here at in the world of solutions on the show floor. Again, you can't miss it with the gigantic sign. Uh, the Cisco Stadium, come visit us if you're here. If not, check out some of the stuff we have uh, in addition to this online. Where, where can people go? Look, if you want to know the architectures that we've used to uh, when we go into stadiums, go to Portfolio Explorer. We give you all the, uh, the architect and, and how we've uh, mapped it out uh, for success for these teams. The other place you can go is, you know, go on Cisco.com and backslash sports, bring up all the use case cases so that you can actually watch the videos that we've made around the outcomes and the success that these teams have enjoyed. Uh, I know you're biased here, and I have a feeling I know your answer. If you, excluding this, though, have, have you, is there a piece of tech or something on the show floor that you've seen this week that's, that's your favorite? From a technology perspective? Yeah, from a technology perspective. I mean, again, I know you're going to be biased here, but. I mean, look, it, it, it is all about outcomes. I think it's our entire story, Davis. When we approach the stadium and we talk about a converged network and everything that you plug into it, um, our story is better than anybody else's out there simply because we have the end-to-end -end solutions. Converged network allows you to plug IPTV, HD Wi-Fi, um, IP fabric for media. It allows us to talk outcomes to our, our uh, you know, customers. You know, how much revenue are we able to generate yeah. through a solution and technology? So therefore, technology is not looked at as a sunk cost anymore. We're actually feeding money back to the Joneses. And well, and the NFL is such a great sponsorship and a great partnership because it's not just about, oh, can we broadcast a football game? We're powering everything from when they get out of their car to pull up their, their tickets to get into the stadium, their point of sale. We cover it all end to end, which is amazing. We've got about a minute left here. 
I want to look at this flashy, shiny thing we got over here. What, what is that over there? Well, listen, um, partnership in the NFL allows us to bring in their, uh, their most prized possession. It's the Vince Lombardi Trophy. The Vince Lombardi Trophy. The, the This Vince is the real Lombardi. one. Sorry. That's correct. And so um, after you learn about all about our solutions and what we've done in stadium, you've made the call. Why not sit back and take a picture with a championship trophy? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'd like to take it back to my hotel room, maybe stuff it in my suitcase. Don't touch it. Don't, t oh, don't touch and it at don't, all. Don't walk away with it. Okay, so. We'll take a picture of it, and we'll capture it on social media, um, and then we'll push that uh, picture of you and, and the Vince Lombardi trophy for everybody to see. <laughs> That's fantastic. Ken, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. This is great. What should, should people come down or should they not come down? What I do you mean, think? look, if you're a sports fan, come on by and see us. We'll talk sports. Awesome. We'll talk technology. Thanks for your time, Ken. Uh, Steve, uh, I think you should actually just come out of the studio and come join us here because we're having too much, too much fun over no, here. No, Davis, they don't let me out of the studio. I thought you understood that. Once I'm here, I'm here. I don't go anywhere. You're <laughs> the one who gets to go have all the fun. I, I, uh, I just stay here and watch you have the fun, which okay, I'm I'll, fine I'll with, by that. the way. That's, that's fine with me, too, then. Okay. <laughs> Davis, great job. Please thank Ken for us. Uh, fantastic walk through the stadium. is an incredible activation. Great connection with the uh, NFL story. It's another fantastic example of why it is just so much fun to be here, to be uh, uh, in person at this incredible event, take advantage of everything. All right, next up, we're going to talk friction for a moment. Any time that any employee, you, one of your employees spends in friction with a tool, a system, a platform, that is a moment that they are not getting their work done. They're not doing their job or doing what they love to do or what they want to do or what they are best at. So. How do we take friction away, take it out of the workplace? We're going to join Cisco's chief information officer, Fletcher Previn, to experience the unique goal and responsibility of IT in shaping the culture of the employee experience in enterprise organizations just like yours and take that friction away. Let's send it out to Fletcher. All right, good morning. Welcome to the IT leadership track of Cisco Live. Thanks for being here. What I thought I would do is um, share with you this morning a little bit to have a you know, behind the curtain look at how we run the IT function in Cisco. Uh, but before I do that, a little bit about myself. Um, you know, I think you could say I got an early start in IT. That's, that's me all the way on the left there with uh, the thing I was really obsessed with on my 10th birthday, which was the first computer that uh, we had as a family. And then uh, there was a while where I thought maybe I would go into a different line of work, well, maybe not that different, entertainment, uh, and spent some time on movie sets and worked as a, uh, an intern at the David Letterman and the Conan O'Brien shows. But ultimately, I figured out um, my real passion is IT. And after I graduated from school, moved out to the West Coast, that picture looks like I worked at a, a store, uh, but I was working at walmart.com in the e-commerce division. Uh, I started there as a systems administrator, became a systems engineer, got some certifications, became a network engineer, then an engineering manager, uh, and eventually moved over to IBM, where um, I eventually became their CIO, um, spent my last four years there as a CIO of IBM. And then more recently joined Cisco, where I now have the, uh, the great pleasure of being CIO at Cisco. A little bit about uh, Cisco from an IT perspective. It's about 84,000 full-time regular employees, so it is a fairly large organization. And then somewhere in the neighborhood of 50,000 contractors at any given time. So you know, from an IT department, we're supporting about 135,000-ish person workforce. Uh, doing business in 98 countries and 370 offices plus around the world. Lots of endpoints, lots of mobile devices. Um, the IT department, by the way, is about 11,000 people. So our mission, our vision, our values, um, you know, the vision for IT for ourselves is um, not just to be competitive in the market, but, you know, we're Cisco and we should at least aspire to be best in class. That you know, we want to be out there doing things that people have never seen or done before and pushing ourselves in that way. And it's one thing for us to say we're doing a good job, but it's really another when people that we respect and admire say that about us. And that's a sort of good aspirational vision for ourselves. 
Um, and so we set a goal for ourselves of double the throughput in half the cycle time, which um, is sort of a creative way of saying four times the throughput. But you know, the reason that we picked that is you cannot get four times the amount of work done by tweaking things at the margins. You've got to really fundamentally do things differently. Um, you know, the, the tactics have to match the skills. And so you, you can't get this by just asking people to work longer hours. We're going to have to really um, approach our work in a different way. And so that formed the basis of our strategy for IT, which is these three pillars around talent and culture, ways of working, and technology. Talent and culture is all about um, building technical expertise. Like I said before, you know, the tactics and the skills have to be aligned, and we're just going to have to do things that we've never done before and develop that muscle. Ways of working is all around embracing uh, agility and reforming ourselves into stable, agile, productive teams, uh, not body shopping work, not moving teams of people onto projects, but really building this IT delivery engine and then flowing work through that engine in a healthy way. And then technology, which is all about building things in a loosely coupled, tightly aligned, cloud-enabled cloud way and shifting left in our uh, build uh, dev test environment so that we get um, speed, better security, better compliance. And, you know, the other thing we spend a lot of time thinking about from an IT perspective is IT being